Assalamu alaikum and thank you for viewing Dawa Works. I am your host, Saudi Man. Our topic today, the role of the aql in relation to iman. Many remain silent for fear of being labeled politically incorrect. That's where I come in. And oh, by the way, I'm just saying. The subject requires a lot of dedication, even more so than the 10 minute allotment for YouTube videos. So we'll just consider this a crash course. What separates man from other creation is al aql Jinn excluded. Contrary to popular opinion, al aql is a process and not an organ. However, in order for this process of mind to function, one organ is necessary, and that is the brain. In one hadith, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam indicated that the pen of good and bad deeds is lifted on the insane until they become sane. This would indicate that a functional brain is necessary in order for a mind to function. Number two, senses. Man must be able to sense a thing before it can be intellectually processed. And whatever cannot be sensed cannot be processed. If I were to ask you what this is and did not allow you to touch it or see it, would you be able to tell me? Therefore, senses are indeed a necessary component to the process of mind. Third, reality. All matter must conform to the reality before it can be intellectually processed. If I were to tell you that I saw a winged pink elephant, would you believe me? Of course you wouldn't. Although wings, the color pink, and elephants are within the reality, you would never believe that all three existed in the same entity. I'm just saying. Again, man can only intellectually process what is within the sphere of his reality. This is why when man attempts to comprehend Allah Ta'ala's complete essence, he brings Allah Ta'ala down to his own reality. مَا قَدَّرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ So you'll notice certain tribes, when they make statues of what is considered to be a god, this statue god would reflect certain physical features of said people. Man cannot comprehend Allah Ta'ala's total essence because this is something that is beyond man's reality. But as for the existence of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, reality solidifies this fact 100%. And for those that say that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's existence cannot be proven, it is the same as to say that every unsolved crime does not have a criminal. I'm just saying. The fourth and last component would be previous knowledge. As to the origins of previous knowledge, of course we learn from our parents, who learn from their parents, who learn from their parents, all the way back to the first father and mother, Adam wa Hawa, alayhum salam. But from who did Adam receive this previous knowledge? Easy, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allow me to digress. Deniers of Haq would have us believe that early man was nothing more than a head-scratching, stone-kicking idiot. Fact is that man as man has never changed or evolved. Only the tools at man's disposal have evolved through ingenuity and invention. Just as if today's man was stranded on an island, he would use his ingenuity in order to adapt and survive. I doubt seriously that he would spend the rest of his life scratching his head and kicking stones. So let's recap. In order for al aql or the mind to function, there must be a functional brain, senses, reality, and previous knowledge. And if any of these four components are missing, the mind would cease to function properly. I'm just saying. Now, how must we understand al aql in relation to Al-Iman? The belief in Islam is simple, in that we believe that there is no God except God, and that Muhammad is the last messenger of God. Again, as I stated before, our mind can definitely prove the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But as far as proving his essence, our mind is fallible. 
Therefore, we must rely upon what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed about himself in order to understand his essence, so that we may not fall into the mistakes made by others who attempted to understand the full essence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm just saying, upon realizing that Allah ta'ala indeed does exist, then naturally the human being wants to strive to establish a relationship with his creator. This relationship is established by following the example of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. However, this relationship is not established based on some blind belief. Just as we used our aql, our mind, to prove that Allah Ta'ala existed, we also use our aql, our mind, to prove that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is indeed the last messenger of Allah sent to all of mankind. We do so by proving that the Qur'an is an undeniable miracle from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and no man could produce the like of it, then and even now. That this man Muhammad, who could not read or write, that was Nabi Umi, an unlettered, unlearned prophet, recited over 6,000 verses, 114 chapters, pure classical Arabic, without any mistake in it, grammatical or otherwise. Now we realize that some believe that there was an atom that spun out of control and exploded and started the process of the creation of the heavens and the earth. Or they believe that some amoeba or slime crawled out of the waters. And by this, they established that no God exists. But they have to ask themselves, where did the atom come from? Where did the amoeba or slime come from? And would you rather worship an amoeba or a piece of slime or the creator of all that we have witnessed or what we have not yet to witness? I'm just saying. The Quran can only have three possible origins. As for the Arabs, we have to understand that their reaction to the Quran was very hostile. Also, the Quran challenges the Arabs to produce at least three verses similar or better than the over 6,000 verses revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They could not fulfill the challenge back then and they could not fulfill the challenge even today. And it would be even more ludicrous to think that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam produced this Qur'an himself. After all, he was indeed one of the Arabs. أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَى قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا And as for the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we must say that either creation has no creator and no origin, or that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created himself, or someone else created Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As for the false concept that creation has no creator, this can be easily dispelled by stating that everything that we comprehend indeed has an origin. Equally ridiculous is to imply that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created himself. Lastly, to imply that someone created Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would mean that the one that created Allah was indeed the original creator. Again, entering a sphere that man cannot comprehend. Therefore, the belief in Islam conforms to man's intelligence. I'm just saying. Unlike other belief systems, such as secularism, that states that Allah ta'ala has no relationship with his creation, or that the originator of life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, should be separated from life itself. And unlike communism that states that there is indeed no creator at all, Islam agrees with al-aql because it originates from the one that created al-aql. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the aql the arbiter in proving the validity of the Islamic belief. Allah ta'ala has ranked his creation by two. One is aql and one is ghair aql. Those that fall under ghair aql are not subject to judgment and will not be charged on judgment day. But as for the aql, they are indeed responsible for their belief and their behaviors in this life. I'm just saying. This has been Saudi Man for Dawah Works. Assalamu alaikum.